Right, okay, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. It is hashtag I am visible with guest and co-host, but I can't find the H, so I can't put the host on, um, Louise uh, Presley-Turner, who is an expert at um, creating and you know talking from the stage. She runs a business called the Game of, My Game of Life, so she knows everything about how to um, position yourself on stage and why it's so important to actually um, speak from the stage in order to make yourself visible. Um, right, Louise, thank you very much for joining today. My first question to you is this, why is it so important to actually, you know, go to go on stage, even if you might be a quivering wreck? Why do you need to get over those fears? Yeah, and I think, you know, speaking on stage is a great way to become that go-to expert. There's something about getting on stage and people listening to what you have to say, you know, you engage them, um, you know, and they see you very quickly as that go to expert. Now, you know, I suppose speaking on stage isn't for everybody. But what I will say is that if, if you feel terrified by the prospect of getting on stage, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't something that um, came naturally to me to begin with. It was something I had to um, I had to build my confidence at doing. And the more that you do it, the better you become, the less scary it is. But, you know, when I started my business, Amanda, 10 years ago, uh, with very little budget for marketing, I realised that, for example, getting in the media, getting on stage wasn't going to cost me a beam. Um, and it was a great way of becoming visible, um, obviously getting clients, becoming known as the expert. So for me, it was a bit of a no brainer to kind of get my business going and to get my list, uh, build my list and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, for me, it launched my business and helped me to grow my business to what it is today. Brilliant. Now, you said um, it didn't wouldn't cost you a bean getting onto stage. So I know there are some events that you actually have to pay, even if you're to be the expert. So tell me, tell me a bit more about having these free gigs. Yeah, well, I've never, ever, ever paid to go on any stage ever. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, um, you know, very often I'm invited nowadays. But um, but often, yeah, you can find an event. And the important thing is, of course, to find an event where your ideal client hangs out. There's no point me going to speak at the, the, the motor show. You know, there's no point at all. So mind, body, soul shows for me, business shows, that kind of stuff. So obviously you've got to choose the right kind of stage. And simply it's about making contact with the organisers and saying, hey, you know, I'd love to have a slot. You know, how do I do that? And normally there's a bit of form filling, um, that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty simple. You've just got to be tenacious, really, but making sure that you choose the right stage. OK, great. Anybody here who's actually in? A, we're actually we've locked the seat at the moment. We're going to be opening up to questions for the last 20 minutes. We're just going to do this until one o'clock. But anybody here who's on the call at the moment or on Blab at the moment is actually given a gig on stage. Have talked on stage? Just, you know, you can clap Louise, <laughs> you know, press the props, whatever you call it. Uh, it be interesting to hear. I mean, I've done quite a bit of presenting because I offer workshops. And yes, at the, the first few minutes, it can actually be quite nerve wracking, can't it? To kind of, you know, get your nerves. How, well, how do you get over those initial nerves? Well, for me, I, I, I need to feel really prepared when I go on stage. So I will spend a few days before kind of planning what I'm going to say. I actually will even rehearse it in my office. You know, really? Really? Yeah, um, because your brain, it's the repetition. And then when you're on stage, you kind of, yeah, you know what you're going to say or it feels more familiar than just going up there cold. So personally, I think it's really good to prepare and to kind of know what you're going to say and to and to say it aloud, you know, even in front of a mirror or even record yourself can be um, can bear it can be really useful so that you when you get on stage. Yeah, you're uh, you're prepared. Therefore, you're going to be less nervous I think you're always going to be nervous and nervous being nervous is good because it gets the adrenaline going and, and very often you do a much better job if you're if you're not nervous then there's something wrong I think <laughs> yeah my problem is I always get really thirsty I get a really dry mouth before I'm about to start you know talking it's like oh god so you need to suck a sweet or something but you know that's just it and then when you get into the flow then it really does work and do you are you an advocate for having visual aids you know like a powerpoint presentation some people say it's death by powerpoint i actually love because i'm really visual and i like to show things by big images but what do you say about that? i've never ever used a powerpoint when i'm on stage they look at me yeah, and, um, yeah i've just never used 
um, PowerPoints, never felt I needed to really, or I didn't want the distraction probably more so that, um, you know, I'd have to remember when to press the button. So I've used PowerPoints for lots of different things, but not when I'm on stage. And again, it depends on what you're talking about and mm. it depends on your platform and your stage. I mean, some, some stages you just can't do that. Yes. Um, and a lot of the stages that I've spoken on, you, I wouldn't have been able to mic and that's it, you know, so yeah. Okay. Hi, Andy. Andy Foote's just joined us. Um, what was I going to ask? Oh, yeah. So, okay. So how on earth do you um, service address? Ian is just saying no slides anymore. He's ditched that method. Um, how, how, how the hell? Do you remember your bloody what you're going to say? <laughs> well, do you know, again, um, and some people may well disagree, but I always take prompt cards up with me. Now, I don't use them. They're, they're almost a comfort blanket. Right. Um, and I mind map actually that's how I plan what I'm going to say so I literally draw a mind map so it's very visual and I'm a very visual person and um, I take them on stage with me so whether they're sitting on the lectern and I'm a bit of a pacer up and down the stage I'm not someone that's that sort of stands still um, and sometimes they're just in my hand but I very rarely need to look at them but I think for me it's a bit of a comfort blanket so it's up to you really I mean you definitely definitely do not want to be reading a script or you know reading off of your prompt cards because that's really not engaging not good practice at all but for me it's a bit of a comfort blanket it works for me but i rarely use them oh that must be amazing because i'm sure i would just kind of go off topic or you know get distracted suddenly oh my god what the hell was i talking about come back to you know to planet earth so that's good and how much do you uh, interact with your audience I, I do interact with them. So very often I'll start a talk off, depending on what the topic is, and I'll get their buy in. So I will say, for example, does anybody feel like this? And I'll say the question. And then I actually raise my own hand, which yes. prompts them to raise their hand. So you've sort of instantly got that engagement. Um, and very often I'll get clients to agree with me. So I'll say I'll actually say to them, say yes. And they'll all go, yes. Yes. So, yeah, I do engage the audience because it keeps them. I mean, very often a talk might be 20 minutes, 40 minutes. Workshops are a different thing because they can be hours long and, and you've got to, you know, you've got to be mindful of that. But no. Um, yeah, I do get engagement. I think it's really good to do. Yes, I think so as well. I mean, I've gone to one particular uh, woman who gives talks and <laughs> she actually asked for me, it's a bit cringy. She kind of says, you know, that's what I really wanted to learn all day. You know, you have to kind of like turn to your partner to do any of that kind of stuff that, the, you know, the having a quick chat with your partner to break the ice and to make people a bit more relaxed. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm fairly relaxed. I don't I'm always on stage on my own, Amanda. So uh, there, there is no sidekick as such for me to kind of. Um... No, sorry, I mean, for the audience members to kind of. Sit oh, down I see. Not, no, not with you. No sidekick. No, no. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I do. Um, I, I've previously had the, the the person say to the person next to them to feed them a compliment or something like that. Yeah, I oh, think engagement's yeah. great. I think it really kind of um, keeps people on their toes as well. Yes, yes. And I think it's just nice. I mean, I like to be engaging and otherwise you just don't want to be a boring person standing there going, this is what I'm going to deliver. It's just very monotone. So yeah, I, I also think, Amanda, um, storytelling is a big part of being on stage. So rather than go up on stage and just give your tips and bore them to death, um, actually to tell a story that has a, obviously a purpose to it, you know, a moral to it, if you like. Um, and people will remember a story. They'll remember oh, that was the woman who who that happened to or this happened to. And I think people are really, yeah, they love to kind of hear those life stories. And um, you don't want to give them your life story entirely, but a snippet of something that happened that led to something or there was a sort of a learning behind it. Mm, yes, I think because otherwise you just can't relate to it. So if it's something to do with what you've actually done or a live example, I think giving live examples, is that what you mean by storytelling? Absolutely, exactly that, yeah. Mm. yeah. Great. So do you want to know anything about how to get people there? Any questions for, from the PR aspect? Yeah, so, yeah, I wanted to sort of talk to you about imagining you've uh, maybe put together your own event, workshop, retreat, something, talk, something like that. Yeah. How would you get PR? How how, OK, so what you need to think. OK, so you said you're not going to you, Louise, you're not going to give a, um, you know, a seminar for the motor conference uh, industry because that is not your industry okay so just quickly who would be your typical person to come to your event 
Um, with where my business is now, it would be business owners. Yeah, people in the first few years of their business. Yeah. So, you know, so you need to think about who is your client avatar? Where do they hang out? Online, offline, okay? So um, I recently looked at Red Magazine and they're running an event or they ran an event uh, two weeks ago called Smart Women. So that's going to be the, my typical client potentially. It's people who are intelligent. I potentially would target mainly females, but, you know, I do work with men as well. So I'd look at the kind of magazines that they consume both online and offline. And also the people I also want to be targeting are business people. So I would be looking at the business press, you know, the Sunday Times and the business section um, and also, you know, business insider and whatever uh, things which I would be reading myself as a businesswoman, I would go there and try to pitch there. I would also not at all forget about the lovely social media that we have here. Ian from Service Address, you know, he said to me the other day, what is the point of PR? <laughs> you know, what's the point of PR when you've got social media? And I said to him, Ian, you know, social media is all about me, me, me. I'm talking about how wonderful I am. I'm saying, oh, I've just done this on Twitter. I've done this, I, I, I. To have a journalist talk about you or to talk about your, your future event and how it could be life changing would be absolutely amazing for many reasons. A, for the SEO, the social, how do you call it? God, <laughs> SEO. Optimization. Come on, vamos. So, you know, if you're SEO, that's going to be great if you manage to get into the Guardian or the Times or wherever, you know, online. Because very, very often, if you get into the printed press, they will also put that online as well. So that I, I built my business actually through getting in the press. I mean, that's I mean, this is going back 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but I that's it, that's how I did it. And social media has changed things. But um, I still think it's so valuable to get your name in, in the print. Yeah. I really think so. And people do think, oh, what's the point nowadays? But I, I strongly think that if you've got a journalist writing about you, that is such kudos for you. So try and do that. Also on um, social media, try and have a hashtag. So I've basically, I did an event at the O2 workshop in Tottenham Court Road in London, and I called it I am visible hashtag. And so the great thing is about having an exciting hashtag, which everybody can go to, you can, you know, you can talk about that, push it out with all your, um, you know, your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever feeds you're doing. So you're going to be covering many, many people. And the exciting thing is creating a buzz during that event is you can say to the people, guys, do you mind just, you know, if you're enjoying what, what I'm saying, you're enjoying my workshop, do a hashtag visible because then, you know, other people will, be, will engage with it. Um, so that's that's what I would do in order to do that. And also, really importantly, is to look at all the business listings. So I think there's one in uh, the UK and it's called Tech City and they have a business listing section, you know, as an events listing. So just have a look there. Also, you know, we can also sell tickets free on Eventbrite. Now, Eventbrite is brilliant for SEO as well. So, you know, I could have actually publicized this lab today on Eventbrite and I would have got more SEO juice and PR juice out of doing that. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. So you talk about kind of the media. How do you pitch, though? Because I'm, I'm always sort of uh, and I've been very gung ho in my approach to, to how I've done this. But I wonder if there, if there is a, a right way of approaching the media. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've been blacklisted in the past for pitching in the incorrect way. So, yeah, I run a course called The Seven Secrets on How to Get Into the Press. And on one of those steps, I actually say this is what you do not do. So to be blacklisted, it was horrendous. It was when I was running my online e-commerce store and I was really desperately wanting to get into all the magazines because my business was very seasonal. It's uh, knitwear from Peru. And I just got upset. I was like a banshee. I said, I said, right, I'm going to get into the press. I'm going to do it, whatever the weather. So I just kept on calling this woman. And I didn't realize because I wasn't I didn't have a PR plan of action sorted out. So I hadn't got a spreadsheet with tick. You know, have I spoken to so and so? Yes, I have. What was her comment? What did she say? When to call back? So I hadn't done that because I literally was just using magazines. You know, at the front or back of a magazine, it's got all the contact details, the editor and the telephone number. I just use that as my kind of like business jotter. Oh, my God. And then I called this woman. I think about three or four times, she goes, Amanda, never call me again. <laughs> so that's how you don't pitch to the press. If you do want to pitch, I mean, there's many, many ways on how you do it. But what you should actually do is um, do very short emails. Hi, Henrik, he's just joined. You must, um, you know, they just want to see, see three bullet points of how, you know, what this event's all about or your, you know, the whatever, whatever you're pitching to the press, whatever it is. 
three bullet points, you know, very, very uh, to the point because they have not got time to read reams and reams and reams of email and they don't want to. And it's also got to have quite a catchy headline. Uh, I was speaking to a journalist the other day from um, from The Guardian and she says it's not all about jazz hands, like, you know, promising an amazing title in your subject box. So don't try and make it more than actually it is, but just be, you know, to the point, but it's got to be quite catchy and got to capture their their attention. It's got to peak, if you know what I mean. I did an event, actually, this sort of jogs my memory. I did an event a couple of years ago called International Change Your Life Week. So oh. that was kind of the hook, a bit like International Sausage Day or Cheese Day. You get all yes. these random things. So I came up with this sort of event, and obviously it was an online event, not a physical event. Um, and my strategy was to get in the media to kind of get the message out there. Um, and as a result of doing that, we got into some um, news, physical newspapers, but we also got into the Huffington Post. And I still blog for the Huffington Post, and that was off the back of um yeah that particular event which was great because it drove more people to that site at the time yes that's what i'm saying about the seo juice so it's kind of like you can call it pr slash seo nowadays because it really is about being online yeah so um is anybody who's watching this has anybody got any questions about pr or um you know about your first gig from the stage or you must be a hand i mean there was an interesting question the other day which i popped into when i was watching another blab because service address has made me a blab addict <laughs> and that is uh, what what do you do louise if someone okay let's say you're doing a workshop and somebody keeps putting up their hand and asking question after question you're thinking right okay how do you deal with um question hoggers <laughs> <laughs> well if i have a question hogger yeah uh, i would often say to them look let's have five minutes together at the end and normally they're quite happy with that because that's what they really want is a bit of personal one-to-one -one time that's why they keep asking questions so yeah, yeah if I find that you know if I'm running a retreat or something and somebody's keeps putting their hand up that's what I'll say look let's have a chat why don't you and I have a chat at the end for five minutes and I can answer all those questions for you and mm. that normally shuts them up and and, um, and then I do I go back and obviously make sure I do do that I think Ian's trying to demonstrate that he's just wanting to ask a question. So, Ian, you heard what the instructions are. We'll have a one on one with you after the event. <laughs> or another idea. This is what this other lady said was for you to actually just ask the audience and say, OK, guys, do you feel this would help you with our workshop or, you know, should we move on? And I can speak to this person directly afterwards. Yeah, that's a great idea to see if anybody else wants to know the answer. I, think it's, yeah. I mean, I was running a workshop recently. Oh, my goodness, this man literally was like, you know, his, his arms are like that all the time. It's like, okay. <laughs> anyway, but, you know, he was he was interested, so we can't, you know, deride that, can we? Yeah, and some of the audiences that I, I've spoken to are quite big, so yeah. I don't think many people are very brave to to put their hand up when there's a thousand people in the audience or a few hundred. So I think in workshops you're more likely to, yeah, to get that kind of level of engagement. Yes. So does do, do your standing on stage fears depend on, how many people it is or is it just simply you're going to stand on stage um do you know i'll be very honest and i've done some big big stage gigs um the biggest one i did was when i did i can do it for hay house my publisher and there was over a thousand people and it was at the armadillo in in um in scotland in edinburgh oh no sorry glasgow so a massive arena and do you know what the worst times for me are when there's actually a really small amount of people in the audience mm -hmm. and you can see the whites of their eyes that for really? me is, is far far harder I don't know why um, or my very first workshop was just full of family and friends because that's the only people I could kind of get to come along and that was worse really? so I, I actually find the more people the more I'm able to kind of have that detachment maybe and, and just yeah and just kind of um yeah I, I definitely there's something about having a smaller amount for me that makes me more nervous because I'm be the opposite and think, you know, if I'm talking to a whole load of people, I don't know whether I'm saying the right thing, whether they're understanding me, you know, there's no kind of interaction with them. So that's me personally, because, you know, you know, you want to have and I know the expression is like nodding dogs. You want to have people like that in the audience. Going, yes, I think that's great. But, you know, if it's such a huge audience, like, you know, the NEC arena, I don't know what you do. I suppose you just kind of get people to put their hand up. And I suppose that's oh, how I personally would you know, do that in order to validate that I'm not, you know, that I'm saying the right thing and it's resonating and it's interesting. And also that, that particular gig I mentioned, I had 20 minutes on stage. So mm. there, there was no time for, for answers or questions yeah. or anything yeah. or anyway. So yeah. it's, it's quite a different kind of, uh, it was quite a different gig really to maybe one I might typically do. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I think when you're running an event in order to kind of keep it um, visual for everybody is, I don't know how many people here actually use Periscope. 
So if you can't manage to record your event, you know, if you haven't got a cameraman live there, you know, I went to an event and they literally had a, a suck you, a sucker thing, which you can stick your, your um, telephone, your iPhone onto the, um, you know, the glass window. That's what you could potentially do or get a tripod to then stick the periscope. So people can, you know, it's live streamed and then it's also recorded as well. Is this how they do it? Because I'm often sort of, I, I was invited to um, an event or wanted to go to event an event in Africa somewhere. I think it was in Johannesburg and there was live streaming. Is that how they do it, do you think then, through Periscope or those kind of platforms? I don't know how they would have done it, but I know that, you know, also live streaming, you know, they have the cameras there. You know, I've done, I've gone to many events with them, um, event, what's it called, Enterprise Nation, and they, they're literally filming it directly. So it depends. You no, know, but this is, you know, if you're running a small event, a workshop, and you want to share it with, you know, with everybody else, that's, and that's another recommendation for how you can do it. I personally haven't used, um, haven't used Periscope yet. <laughs> I'm more in love with Blab as a medium, but I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to take my huge PC over to, um, you know, to the next venue I use, I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay, so service address is saying live streaming has so many different methods. Well, yes, there are probably hundreds of different methods. Um, a recommendation I'd give you when you are going to be giving uh, any kind of a talk is actually to ask for photographs. So if you've got a happy helper at your event, just say, hey, do you mind, you know, taking some photographs of me on stage, talking on stage, delivering the talk. And then it's also great to have loads of head, you know, lots of heads sitting down watching you. Do you know what I mean? So that kind of a shot. And then in addition, if you've actually got somebody who's live streaming you or who's like a cameraman, I recommended to somebody the other day that they got a picture. They got their happy helper to take a photograph behind the cameraman. So you're going to see the event being filmed, all the heads and you on stage. I mean, how is that for social proof? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and that's a really, really good tip, Amanda, because it is social proof. And again, it's positioning yourself as that go to expert. So, yeah, I think getting photos when you have a gig on stage and also for the press as well. It kind of shows kudos as well, doesn't it? When you go back, to the, you know, something else you're doing in the future yeah yeah because I gave a you know a talk recently and I actually use that as my Twitter banner so if anybody goes to my Twitter you can be actually be able to see <laughs> and do you know what it was really awful because um I had my camera it was all charged memory stick was cleaned I had about eight gigabytes ready for video for photos all the rest of it and then I asked the organizer my happy helper to take the photograph she goes and I said to her at the end great just get lots of shots and she goes no because you haven't put your memory card in. Oh my God, it was so awful. But luckily there were some people in the audience actually taking photos. So I, you know, I collared one of the blokes. I said, excuse me, you know, can I have that shot? And he said, yeah, here it is. You know, because what he'd done is he he'd actually tweeted, live tweeted that picture of me delivering the, the um, talk. Yeah. So again, it's also the social proof and becoming visible, raising your head above the parapet. Yeah. Yeah, and I just think, you know, for me as a business owner, and obviously social media has changed things somewhat, but I do, I'm absol an absolute advocate of getting in the media, whether you start local, whether it's, you know, or regional or even national, um, and getting on stage. I think they're really two very, very powerful and effective and cheap, really yeah. inexpensive ways of getting your name out there. Yes, I mean, doing PR for yourself is free, you know, it doesn't cost anything to, you know, you can stalk your, your target journalist on Twitter, you can kind of learn their language, who they hang out with on Twitter, that's a really good way to do it. Um, but also, if you are a bit nervous about pitching to the press, I do always, I always recommend what you just actually said, is start local, because the local newspapers are actually looking for stories all the time. You know, they really are needing interesting stories about, you know, the people who live in their region or their town or whatever. So start there. So if you wanted to, if you really wanted to suddenly launch yourself, Louise, I know you've already done it, but anybody who's watching, um, you know, don't go first off to the, you know, to CNN News or to don't go straight off to, you know, the editor of the Telegraph. Cut your teeth with your spit, with your pitch and your mini speech saying, hi, my name's Amanda Ruiz. I'm known as the, 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 I'm known as the ultimate door opener. I would just want to tell you about the, la, 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 la. OK, so you can get it ready. You can practice just like you do when you're about to give a talk. Practice in front of the mirror. OK, do it to the local journalist and then they might actually give you some hints and tips as well as well, we're not right for it. But have you thought of this magazine or that magazine might be right? Because at the end of the day, journalists are all human beings. You know, they're people like me and you, but they just get a bit irritated with having, you know, thousands of pitches daily. But, you know, if you're the but they still need news. That's the thing. They're still actively looking for stories. 
Yeah, and what I found when I started off with local media um, was that there's not many gatekeepers. There's normally one or two people that run that magazine. And yeah. my approach was to ask them what they would want me to write about. So I told them my area of expertise and said, look, you know, obviously you need content. Let me write something for you. You know, what would you be interested in? So they, I basically took what they gave me and went and wrote something rather than me decide what I thought they should be yeah. printing you know and then delivering that as a press release I took it the other way and actually sort of said you know what do you want me to write about and that's how I first got published locally brilliant um, and it worked really well yeah hi Fabrizio I don't know where you're joining us from are you in the UK Italia but that's a really good tip yes to um you know to actually turn it spin it around because also my other tip about you know getting into the press is just think is your story a interesting to the editor and b is it interesting to the reader? You know, you might be launching, you know, a brand new uh, you know, boiler, but really, is that going to be exciting? This is a, this is somebody, um, Harriet Minter from The Guardian. She, on my one of my Q&As, she said, look, you know, you can say, yes, I'm about to, you know, I'm launching this, you know, this new boiler. Wow, what's so exciting about it? But if you give all the reasons about it, it keeps you warm in the wet, you know, in the winter and try and spin some stories about just a boring white object, which is going to go in your kitchen, you're going to have more more interest and more success getting into the press. I know that's a really boring, rubbish <laughs> example, but you just got to think why, you know, put yourself into the shoes of the journalist and ultimately into the shoes of the reader. Why on earth will I be wanting to read about this? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's got to kind of have that hook, hasn't it? And, and even the storytelling part, again, you know, can, you can weave into press releases, can't you? Yes, exactly. Yes. And I've just heard um, Fabri Silvia has said they've been into the press quite a lot this year. So do you want to tell us which um, what press you've been in? Yes, we can unlock the seat if you want to join. We've only got four minutes left. We're doing a, a 30 minute power. I can't call it power hour. So if you want to speak or you just want to write it down there. Yes, you're going to jump in. OK, so I'm going to unlock the seat. And we can hear. Here we are. Husband, father, entrepreneur, private jets, pilot. Right. OK. OK. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Have you been enjoying it? Yeah. So uh, basically what I've been doing is I've been doing a lot of blogging in LinkedIn. And as a result of that, I've been getting phone calls from the Daily Telegraph. Been in there twice this year. Financial yes. Times been in there once. WealthX been featured about three times in WealthX. I've also been featured in the Financial Times in Mexico, uh, Chicago Tribune. Uh, yeah, so a number. What are you talking about then, Fabio? Well, Fabio. I, I buy and sell aircraft. So uh, one of the areas I, I deal in, I deal with ultra high net worth individuals selling them private jets. Um, so I talk about aviation and th th this kind of subject. And so I blog about what I know about. And uh, these journalists are out there reading this stuff. And uh, they sort of perceive me as the expert, I guess. And they ring me up and they ask me if um, some questions and then they do an article about it. Yes, yeah, so and I think LinkedIn is a great forum for it actually is. putting, you know, just showing your expertise. So many people don't actually use LinkedIn. I know that Ian, who's just jumped in now, he's he's a very amazing expert on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, you know, so Ian knows a lot about it. But I've been publishing, and so you just you do get calls from people who never knew existed, thinking, "Oh, right, that's great." You know, thank you for that. Have you got a link to, you know, do you want to share a link to one of your blogs? In um... well, if you, I mean, if you look. I mean, this is my, let me just write this in here. Uh, uh, if you just Google my name, LinkedIn, you'll find me. And then if you go to the website, which we have, uh, which is the web, uh, on the website, tyruswings.com, there's all the banners where you can link to the different articles. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And so, I mean, that, that, I mean, I think if you, if you put information out and blogging is a great way to do it as well as YouTube videos, for example, we've just started to do some of those. I do a program on Blab now every Thursday called Aeroplane Talk. Yeah. So people can come on and ask questions about aircraft. So we're sort of branching into the video stuff now uh, with a hope that that's going to bring us clients. But through LinkedIn, we've we've had about three, four deals go ahead as a result of using LinkedIn. I've had a billionaire ring me up once, read my blog. He wanted a plane. Who was that? Uh, a billionaire. I can't say who. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know what you said. Right. OK, excellent. OK. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, all this happens. If you, I mean, if you've got an area of expertise, share that expertise with everybody through LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and you'd be surprised who, who, what phone calls you get. Well, do you know what? I'm actually getting loving this uh, blabbing. I really love it because, look, the other day I was with Ian and we had people from, what was it, Bali, Bahrain, you know, wherever, all over the world. And you never know who's going to suddenly pop in. Osaka, we had somebody, you know, Saul from Osaka. So I think this 
is also, but obviously there's no, well, yes, I was going to say there's no SEO juice, but there is because, you know, I've got my hashtag here. I am visible, generate PR with my guests, you know, so all of this, I think all of this is great. No, Blab, I reckon Blab is going to be the next $50 billion company. Do you reckon? I think the owners of Blab, which I know are listening, need to hold on to this thing for three years. And well, they've already said they're going to hold it for two. Well, two, I'd, I'd hold it for three. Yeah. Look at the guys from Snapchat. They said no to five billion. Now it's up a fifteen billion evaluation. Mm. I, I have to say, I think um, definitely as an outsider looking in, I know um, Mandy, you and I have spoken, and since we spoke this morning, I've had a play around and looked at what Louise does. And um, from a personal point of view, um, with my business, I would definitely say that Louise um, has got so much that she could do from not just LinkedIn, but um, blab as well yeah and i've i've not this is the first time i've been on blab so um yeah i i, agree. I forced her onto it i'm afraid i'm glad because i'm resistant sometimes to uh you know yeah i get stuck in my ways you know with the whole facebook kind of thing and i'm a bit of a youtuber too so mm. mm -hmm. but i mean with if you're dealing i would say that if um i don't know where fabio's gone but um gone to sell another jet by the sounds of it that billionaire called him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would probably say um, from what he's spoken about and from what I've seen in the past, Louise, um, it'd be worth you linking up with him because um, just seeing bits and pieces of what you've said, there could be some tie-ins that um, you could actually do together. Yeah, what with the previous chap, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, you know, Louise is new to um, to all this business. So I think you need to go back and then see who's following you and then, you know, follow everybody back if you think it's relevant for you. But I love that because I love seeing everybody's, um, you know, their houses and everything. So I think Louise has got the most attractive backdrop compared to my Indian, uh, whatever, Pakistani throw over a picture, which I can't stand. So I've <laughs> covered it up. And then Ian, you know, where's your branding, Ian? <laughs> Um, we're coming on to that. We've been discussing that, haven't we? So, yeah. But no, I think, um, like I say, <clears throat> when you're saying about from the stage and the bits and pieces that you can do, um, it's brilliant. There's so much that you can do with it. Um, I think, I think, Louise, you've got like a potential for a captive market here. And then, just like um, Amanda says about the PR, there's just the art of engagement between the two of you. You've got something that you could really take on this to another level. Oh, look at that. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. And it's having a good platform. And I think right. getting on the page and, and getting in the media is about building that platform, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think it's such an important part. Mm. Mm. And actually, do you know what? I was also wondering, what about if Louise isn't available to join me today? Suddenly something's gone wrong, you know, kid is ill, whatever. Yeah. Or I just want to go on Blab on my own. I was actually listening to another Blab earlier and I think she was doing a 15 minute. How can I? Oh, what was it? You know, you're in the hot seat for 15 minutes, and so I can so I can solve any problem that you might have business-wise. I think that's a really good thing. So I might start doing, um, you know, PR hot seats. So let me tell you, you know, let me ask you what your what struggles you've had. I mean, obviously, um, Fabrizio was, you know, has done very well by doing his LinkedIn, but some people might not even have it have the, um, you know, I call it the cojones, the balls or the chutzpah to you know to pick up the phone and actually speak to the press and so i can help you through that as well or whatever you know the hot seat here's fabrizio he's coming back yeah let me just i just wanted to add one thing which i started to rush and speak to someone in a minute uh the other thing i discovered i started to slightly do a few blogs which weren't necessarily aviation related but business related because i thought to myself were well, there a lot other people out there selling to the same clients i'm selling to okay and they've got challenges so i wrote i wrote some blogs about selling to the affluent and high net worth individuals and whatever now that got picked up by a guy in switzerland who then wanted to do a skype call with me who introduced me to his business uh, partner who's now buying two airplanes from us so if i kept myself just to aviation i would have never picked this guy up and i didn't i mean i no way i'm going to find this guy uh, he found me because he read the blog because it was it was going out to a slightly different audience and and then he decided yeah, he well, was. That's a pick. really good tip. And just out of interest, Fabrizio, you might be interested. I've got a client who um, is on my course, and she runs a high end dating agency. Okay. So you might have some, uh, you know, contacts who are single, but yet, you know, because it's all for the it's people who are. What is it? Time? No, they are rich. What is it? Something time rich and 
sorry, time poor but rich. What's that? Yeah, yeah well, well, those those people have always they're always very busy, um, yes. and they haven't got time to go to the bar or wherever they go yeah. to meet people. Yeah, I mean, I think high end dating uh, for for high end people is is a is a great business. Well, okay, yeah. so I'm going to intro you because you might you know, so your billionaire might <laughs> nothing flying around in his aeroplane. These might be sad and single. Uh, well, uh, some are, some are, but most of them are happy. Well, you never know. <laughs> but listen, you know, you never forget about your clients when you're doing a lab. Yes, um, so, of course. So can I can I ask Louise? Do you just restrict yourself to business? Well, I my first business, which is the business that you've probably had a look at, the Game of Life um, Limited. I started off um, as a coach, and then I got published with a big international publisher. So I was very much working with women really helping them to become happier sort of with a bit of a spiritual twist to it and as I built this business I started to attract more people wanting to know how I'd done it and that's how I kind of got into more of the business mentoring really which is probably 90% of what I do now so we're building a new platform a new website sort of focusing in on this area really and less um, away from what I used to do because actually it's not a particularly profitable market the market I've been in really the last eight years so well, that's what yeah. I was thinking about you linking up with Fabrizio because one of the things that in some of the uh, publications I've read and Fabrizio you may <clears throat> know this better than I do uh -huh. um, you get the high net worth individuals these people that have got planes yeah. a lot of their partners the women a sort of like very lonely people because it's mixing with the same people or they're like stuck in this little bubble um that's where i was thinking when you dropped off for a bit i was yeah. saying that you and louise could link up and there's possibly some things that you could do together yeah yeah well, i mean these people i mean so, some of the it depends because a lot of the people i deal with are what i call as stealth wealth so they've got the private jet but if you meet them in tesco's you wouldn't you wouldn't know that they're, they're, they're rich okay mm. Um, the, 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 a lot of people have got the wrong idea of these wealthy people. They think that they're, they're all like Richard Branson and they're all extravagant and or like Roman Abramovich and whatever. No, they're not. I would say 97, maybe 98 percent of the people I deal with are very nice people. They don't like people to know they have money. They don't act like they have money. OK, they have a private jet because it's a better way to travel. And if, Quicker. Bear enough. Bear in mind, if you've got the money, why not? Why Why have to go to the Manchester airport or London airport, one of the London airports, three hours before with your family? I mean, I've got four kids and, and, and wife. Every time we travel, it's um, it's always, you know, got to get there early. And uh, if you have your own jet, I mean, you turn up 15 minutes before the plane takes off. So anyway, so going back to these people. So the perception that a lot of people have is, and it's true, some of these people, they, they want to meet other people, other interesting people. Not people with money, which is where some of these people get, get roped into these groups and groups of people with money. No, the real people that have money that don't want people to know about it, they're only interested in meeting interesting people. Mm. Intelligent, interesting people who they can have friendships with, hang out with, and have interesting, inspiring conversations with. That's what they're after. They're not after someone that's got another Louis Vuitton handbag and whatnot. No, forget that. They're, those are the two, three percent, the Victoria Beckhams and all those people that you read about in the press. Let's talk about the stealth wealth because that's where the real wealth is. Mm. So these are the really, these are the really grounded people. Yeah. This yeah. I mean, I mean, I tell you, when I was flying full time, there's one family I flew for. They are based in Switzerland and they own half the island of Santo Domingo. Now, not, nobody knows this. OK, this guy and his wife, his wife's an ex-professional golfer. They spend three months of the year working themselves hands on in these orphanages in Santo Domingo. Nobody knows about it. They right. fly around in this glamorous Global Express private jet, which is one of the most expensive jets on the market. It's white. It's got no logo on it or anything. No yeah. one, they land at the airport, oh, and then they go, they put their jeans and T-shirt on, and they go in and they help these kids. Mm -hmm. now, now, how great is that? Libby, a lot Libby of people that. Is, has said be authentic, and, you know, that's it. You don't need to show off about your wealth, do you? No, no you don't need to. You, yeah, I, I think if you do, you've got a problem up here. You're proving yourself to someone, aren't you? Yeah, but what do you want to prove yourself for? I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about interacting with other humans. Because uh, the day you die, guess what? You're not taking your villa, your plane, your, your Mercedes, your Ferrari with you. We, we, we're born into this world naked and we leave naked. And hey, the only thing we... to that one. I'm going to prop you. Yeah. How can we clap you? <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> and and, and it's all you take with you is the experience that you gain and the things that you learn. And, and part of that is the interaction with other people. 
Yeah, and then, you know, this is the work that I've been teaching the last sort of eight years is, is helping people to kind of find that connection, that authentic connection. And, you know, I think we're all here to make our mark on the world in some way. And if we get if we get, you know, financial riches from doing that, great. But, yeah, I think we all need that sense of purpose. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sense of purpose. And that is also when I teach people how to get into the press, just taking it for the visibility and people do lack confidence. And I yeah. think all of you will do this with your clients or Louise would particularly is that what is your big why? Why are you doing it? Is it to give back to society like your, um, you know, your clients in Switzerland? Is it because you need to put bread on the table? Is it because you want to put your kids through university? Why, why, why? And as soon as you've done that very important task of understanding why you're actually, why I get out of bed, I get out of bed because I love, I'm passionate about helping people build their confidence and, you know, and to get themselves, you know, more visible. Um, you know, as soon as you can do that, you actually have the confidence because many a time people pick up the phone to the press, to journalists, and they're so rude. Like, yeah. And I've had that many times. You just have to say, oh, OK, I'm going to get over this rudeness. And I'm doing it because I want my kids, you know, to have a really great life and to go on nice holidays or whatever. You know, I'm doing it for a certain reason. So, you know, that's a really important tip from me. <laughs> so there you go. So I think, oh, Rocksteady wants to come in. We're a bit over time. Can you manage a few more minutes, Louise? Should we go until yeah, 4 I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. So we'll go on until 1.15. Rock steady. Hello. Hey, good morning. I'm honoured you're staying a little bit longer for me. Hey, Rock, where are you hanging out? I'm uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. I'm, I'm based out of Houston, Texas, but I... I, I come out here for creativity three months out of the year because it gets it, it doesn't it doesn't get cold here. Yeah, I can see you're in a vest. We're very jealous. It's all suddenly getting really cold in England, isn't it, peeps? Yeah. <laughs> How are y'all? I've been enjoying your show. Thank you so much for imparting your wisdom and light. Oh, great. So have you got any questions? Because or are you just enjoying it and wanting to show us your lovely countryside that you're walking through? Oh, I both. <laughs> and your hat's nice. Let me see your hat. Really cool. You're a cool dude, aren't you? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Listen, uh, I know that you're a branding expert. Louise, I wasn't too sure what you did. And Ian, I didn't get a chance to catch what you did. What, what did y'all do? So uh, I work with solo entrepreneurs to help them to kind of launch their business, really. So businesses within the first kind of year or two to help okay. them kind of get out there, get their message right, decide on their pricing, all that kind of stuff. And you, Ian? I um I just sort of like help back and I stand back, look at what you do personally and in a business, and then dis um help you focus which uh, social facilities that you should be using. So how you should be using things like this, LinkedIn stuff like that, and help you set a strategy in place. So there, the, that's where I actually fall in. Yeah, he's pretty much a, uh, a you know he knows everything that's going on. I've got a friend who's techie. Yeah. And I said to her, do you know Medium, Weave and Kifi? And she hadn't heard of them. And it's all thanks to Ian because he's like, he's your person. If you need to know what the hell's going on in social, Ian, service address is your man. And he's just introduced me today to Zoomf. And it's interesting because I've been asked to do a webinar for, for, a, um, for a press business. And they said, we want to have, you know, how, how the hell do you monitor and get the ROI on your press coverage? So Zoomf is going to be the one which I'll be telling them about if I can get it, <laughs> get it to work properly. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, y'all are definitely experts at your. Field, so, what do you do, Rock I, Steady? Rocco Steady, what do you do? I'm a, a personal development, inspirational hip hop artist. Woo! I love it. Okay. So, what I do is, if you took, uh, if you took Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, John Maxwell, all of these beautiful personal development mentors that we love, and then you, you take it and you translate it into hip hop form. That's what I do. I I, I rap. I'm a, okay, can you do us a quick rap then, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now Blab is a diverse city on a map. I'm a rock for the nation and let them know the facts. I react like an alkali, search like an alchemist, allocate the algorithm, access of an altruist. I cut them sorted than an acronym when battling, barreling through the Vatican, alphabetic, I got a myth. Eve, 
Hey. I'm a breathe in the season. Spice it up my life, jazz it up this evening. Seven, eight, and set it arrows through the arrogant. Careful with my words, why these suckers stay garrulous. I love classy women, sort of like Maryland personality. Witty, I am smart when comparing them to alcoholic beavers. Mischievous senoritas that leave us when the grass is greener on the other side. I'm not these other guys. Look at this brother's eyes and realize that we're human and I wonder why. They in the mind, embarrassing us Americans. Why would I ever want to keep up with a Kardashian now? They want to say that life's not fair, but I'm chilling with Louise Ian and the ultimate opener with the vision. And then that one guy that was talking about flying in the air. <laughs> hey, you are amazing. Woo, woo, woo. Thank you. <laughs> Don't we just love your rapping? That's fantastic. I think we need to get a rap next time. Don't blab. Let's rap. <laughs> yeah, yes. So what I do is I take uh, your vision and your mission I have a passion for words and I have a passion for people and their vision and their mission. And I believe that your words will transform your thoughts and your thoughts will transform your decisions and your actions, which ultimately dictate the direction and the momentum in your life that you want to go. Right. So I'm a big manifesto believer. You know, I believe in the power of words. And what I do is I sit down with people for an hour. And I learn about their passions, their goals, their vision, and their mission. And I translate it into their own custom theme song. And they listen to it in the morning. They listen to it throughout the day when they're going through struggles. And what happens is, ultimately, music, whenever I was growing up, hip-hop music uh, brainwashed me to walk down a very dark path. Whether it was drinking or womanizing or smoking weed and doing drugs, whatever it was. I was living that lifestyle because those hip hop artists that I grew up with, they encouraged me to do that. So as as an adult, I discovered that, hey, you know, let me brainwash myself. Let me go ahead and write down what I wanted to, tr to transform in my life. And that, that, that became a business, you know. Uh, and what happens is when I create a theme song for people. I love creating a theme song. It sounds a really great thing to do. And do you mix it with music or is it just a cappella? Yeah, 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 I mix it with music. I take your favorite instruments that resonate with you. You know, us as children, we listen to music that we grew up with, and those certain sounds trigger certain emotions. Well, I've just got a record so, today on vinyl, so I'll open it up. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. Well, that's what I. Do. And do you, um, you know, how do you sell your services on? You know, what, do you do anything on Fiverr? I know it's not. I'm sure you're obviously much more worth than that. But do you, do you ever use that? Because some people do, you know, what you're doing. No, no. Actually, um, my songs start off at $5,000 each. Wow. Well, there so, you go. Five, let's call it 5000 five, Yeah, five, 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 5K. -er. Five -er, so, five -er. five -er. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like I, yeah. I make business, I make uh, theme songs for corporations and like Samsung and Wells Fargo and the city of Houston um, are some of my clients. Amazing. So uh, that's, that's what I do, and I'm, I'm very interested in collaborating with people like y'all because I get to, I get a chance to hear your perspective in your industry, and it allows me to dabble and learn a little bit more of how I can improve my business. So thank you so much for sharing well, your expertise. Thank you for the wrap, and the great thing is that actually um, we're recording it, so you're going to go out. whenever you know If you want to show your clients what you do like that off the bloody hook, woo, they can come right here. I'm about, I I'm about to do a screenshot. Let's take a picture, y'all. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love meeting new people. What I'll do is I'm going to leave yes. uh, my my link in the bottom. Okay. Right. And if there's and I'd love to learn a little bit more. I know that you're about to cut off short because I ended up coming in a little late. But I'm here to make friends with the people here at Blab. So I'm here. I'm building my friends list right. and uh, I, yeah. I'd love to chat with y'all a little bit more. So I'm going to leave my information and contact me if you ever need a little gift wrap or if you ever, uh, you're feeling down or something, I'm here to lift you up. Sounds like you're the man to go to. Thank you very much for coming on Rocco Steady. <laughs> Thank you. Much Bye. 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 <laughs> well, isn't that amazing? So guys, we're going to have to close it off now because we've really gone over time. And I think doing a 30 minute lab, Louise, in the future might have to be an hour. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's good. Oh, I think. Look at the people here. I mean, thank you everybody so much for coming on. Any other I questions? Think, Sorry. I was just going to say. I think if you 
if you take this offline um, and you two are chatting, I know Amanda was a bit unsure at the beginning when I mentioned it to her, but now she sees um, the benefit. Um, I think there is an awful lot of possibilities, Louise, that you can actually do on this and um, set things in place at sort of like regular different times of the day or invite different audiences but going back to something that you said earlier about um live streaming and possibility of like periscope if you're into sort of like um just helping people think about things or focus on things maybe you could just use periscope as um sort of like 10 a.m thought of the day or motivational start and that's how some people do use periscope i know some people in america um when they get up in the morning sort of like they're ladies and it's sort of like they don't even do their hair or their makeup they come on at like 6 6 30 in the morning just to read a book uh read a passage from a book and use it as a discussion point so they'll spend a few minutes reading a passage from a book and then open it up as like the thought for the day and get people thinking that way so you there's could, various yeah you could always do like a daily kind of kickstart or i mean a daily meditation or something like that where you just hop online every morning and yeah and then yeah. people start following you i suppose won't they if they're used to yeah mm. so there's just well, so yeah, many that's ways. Idea, yeah yeah yeah, I need to. I definitely need to use it more in in my business. Definitely. But look at look at the amazing people. And Libby, were you trying to get in, Libby? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, come another time. Yeah, brilliant. So there's but, so many other platforms that you could use as well, Louise. And uh, happy to speak to you offline. Yeah, about I'd love to talk to you. That'd be really good because um, I, I think probably social media is probably the weakest part of my business and one that's I've, I've dragged my feet on. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I've been been bit too busy trying to get on stage and in the press to see you, Amanda. That's what it is. There you go. So yeah, brilliant. Well, listen, let's close it off. And why don't do you want to do it next week sometime, Lib um, Libby? Libby, of course. Let's get you on as well. I'd love to hear your Australian accent. Sorry, I do like to do my accents. The other day I was on a blab and it was a guy in America and a guy in the Philippines, and they just said, We just can't kind of understand your accent. So I just hope anybody who's not um from the UK has managed to understand all of our different accents from where we are in the England. Um, so what we'll do, we'll schedule another one. Um, yeah, is that good, Louise? Yeah, yeah, I'm up for that. Ian, you know, so let's all let's all have another chat. Um, I've got an appointment shortly, so I can't, um, you know, carry on. So I'm going to close it off. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It's been lovely. It's been amazing. I think that rap was just like made my day. And I'm going to go back to the recording. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much. Now, Ian, you're the expert. How do I kind of close it off then? I'll have to press stop recording. And then how do you actually shut it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you press stop record, that take it offline. So thank you very much for watching. I'm now